So, phase 5 is actually so huge that I had to split this video in two parts. If you haven't seen the first one yet, I'll leave a link to it in the description, as we cover most of the AQ war effort materials, as well as materials needed for recipes that drop in AQ, and much more in that video. This video will basically be about all of the materials we forgot about in the first video, so I mentioned large brilliant shards briefly in that video because it's needed for the new enchanting recipes, but I also want to highlight the weapon oils, aka the brilliant mana oil, and the brilliant wizard oil, which are basically 30 minute enchantments to your weapons, and these require large brilliant shards and fire bloom to make, at least the DPS ones, and those will go in huge quantities. Do remember though that each oil has 5 charges, so basically, 2 large brilliant shards and 3 fire bloom will give you 2.5 hours of weapon enchantments, which persists through death. Either way, because of the massive amount of caster DPSers that will use these in raids, the price should go sky high, and I would not be surprised if large brilliant shards go above 10 gold each, but I would also not expect them to do that because of the massive amount of investors that are actually playing in classic. Me myself, I will be buying them until they reach 6 gold each, then I stop just to be safe. I'm also buying fire blooms up to 70 silver each, and these prices are again from my server which is Fire More Europe, and I'm not recommending you buy them for this high, because the potential price gain depends on which type of server you play on, and how popular it is. To further help determine how much you should pay for certain items, I would suggest you watch my previous video, talking about how to determine an item's true worth across servers and so on. It's a pretty short video and definitely worth the watch if you ask me. So large brilliant shards and fire bloom, invest in those. Now before I give you this next tip, I'm just going to do a quick sellout by saying that this information, as well as phase 6 investments, TBC investments, hidden gold farms and secret items to flip for profit, is already available on my Patreon, so if you want to access more gold making secrets before other people, 3 euros a month will give me some oats and you some gold. So as I mentioned in the previous phase 5 video, the Ankirage war effort requires you to turn in certain items for tokens and reputation, and just to start the entire AQ event basically. One of those items is linen bandages, and remember how I told you over and over again not to underestimate how lazy people are? Well, I am legit buying linen cloth for 90 silver per stack, crafting linen bandages and reselling those for 1 gold 50 per stack, giving me around 70% profit. Sure, it's boring to craft, but I can buy a bag full of linen cloth, then craft bandages while I make dinner or take a shower, or press that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Point is, buying linen cloth and crafting linen bandages is a golden recipe to obtain gold. See what I did there? Golden recipe. You can also just scout the auction house for cheap linen cloth and just flip that as well. Like I've bought several stacks of linen cloth for 30 silver and resold them for a gold, giving me 150% profit or more, but not that much profit in actual gold value. This is because linen cloth is the first thing that new players obtain that they actually sell on the auction house, and some people are dumb enough to undercut by a lot for fast sales and some people are just too lazy to check what it's actually worth. Point is, there's profit to be made here, and it's perfect if you're new to the game or playing on a new server. Also, while I'm giving away tips that doesn't directly correlate with Phase 5, or making gold in Phase 5, let me give you some tips on how to avoid losing gold in Phase 5. Larval Acids, sell them now because they will drop inside AQ, increasing the supply by a ton. Since we are also talking about things to do before Phase 5, Here's some ways you can invest your time now to save time in phase 5, and it's actually directly linked to our part 1 video as well. Remember the AQ war effort where you have to deliver certain items for certain tokens? Let's pull those up again. As you can see, a lot of bars and bandages as well as cooked items are on there, and so what you can do now to save time in phase 5 is to make these ahead of time, if you have the bag space and bank space to do so. I mean, if you've already invested in the materials like ores, cloth and fish, you might as well make the product that will sell in phase 5 now anyway, it won't take up any extra space, it will only take time. Examples here are copper bars, spotted yellow tail and rune cloth bandages for both factions, as well as tin bars, wool bandages, mithril bars, mage weave bandage, and baked salmon for the horde, 
and linen bandages, rainbow fin albacore, iron bars, silky bandages, and thorium bars for the alliance. As you can see, the important professions here are mining, first aid, and cooking. You will want to skill these up as high as possible, and let's be honest, first aid and cooking are very easy to skill up anyway. The only one that might take some time here is mining. Either way, this is something you can do now to save yourself some time once phase 5 comes out, and be prepared so you actually have the crafted items ready to sell for the AQ war effort. Also, let's talk about some a bit more speculative investments that could pay off in phase 5 and phase 6, when the nature assist is a bit more in demand, which is Librum of Focus, Librum of Protection, and Librum of Rapidity. Set G, or Sulgurub, nature assist enchants, seems to be the only Set G enchants still requiring Librums, since every other Set G enchant was patched. This might be why these Librams are still so cheap, because many people believe that all of these set G enchants will not require Librams. However, the Nature Assist enchants also competes against enchants like these, the Presence of Sight and Death's Embrace. So you need to consider how many people will actually choose to go for the Nature Assist one. Okay, so before we end this video, I also want to let you guys know about a couple of high risk but potentially high reward investments for phase 5 as well. So here we go. Nature assist rings. These might be wanted for AQ or Naxxramas, and rings are usually the piece of equipment that most people opt to switch out for spell resist, since they give the least amount of stats or DPS increase. Additionally, rings with spell resist, in this case nature assist rings, are always great to flip because there's always someone out there who doesn't know its true value or its true worth, and therefore they put it up for way less than it's actually worth. Swift Thistles. These are used to make Thistle Tea, which is used by rogues. Since the rogues scale very well with gear, you might be seeing a lot more of them in AQ slash Nex, and also on really tough bosses in serious raiding guilds, they will most likely be required to use this for DPS increase. Grum's Blood, used to make Mighty Rage Potion, which is used by warriors, and for the same reason as stated above with Thistle Tea, this might go up in demand slash value as well. Firebloom, Firebloom is one of the many herbs that actually seem worthless, most sell on the auction house for mere silver. This will change by phase 5, and currently the meta requires mages to spec into frost, as the majority of raid encounters features enemies with fire immunities, or fire resistance. At the release of AQ, the max DPS spec will shift to favor the Fire Mage. And to accompany this, Phase 5 also sees the release of a new alchemy recipe, the Elixir of Greater Fire Power. Raiders burn through consumables like their water, and so it can be expected that both of the materials required, Fire Bloom and Fire Oil, will spike in price during Phase 5. Even in the current phase, Winter's Bite, the material of Elixir of Frost Power, costs about 1 gold each on many servers, and that only gives plus 15 frost damage compared to the plus 40 fire damage of the greater firepower elixir. Elemental Earth. This is not that high of a risk, but definitely a high reward, due to AQ and specifically the boss Princess Huhuran. Her poison hits like a truck, requiring raiders to have a lot of nature resist, which is where Nature Protection Potions and Nature Resist Armor comes into play. Living Essence is used to craft certain Nature Resist Armor, which can be used by people raiding, but also by people boosting Maraudon. Some notable sets here include the Sylvan Gear for Cloth Wearers, and the Iron Vine set for Plate. Each individual piece in the set gives between 50 and 30 Nature Resist. I guess I should also mention Nature Protection Potions, and greater nature protection potions, but these aren't really high risk, they're only high reward. Azerothian diamonds and blue sapphires. Ten of each of these are required for a quest in the quest line for opening the AQ gate, or more specifically, it's required for the Scarab Lord. For a full list of items required for the Scarab Lord, and more items to invest in, check out my previous Phase 5 Investments video if you haven't already, since this video is meant to cover items I forgot about in that one. 
So there we go, the second edition, or part 2, of my Phase 5 investments. I will not make another video on Phase 5 investments, so if there's anything I forgot, make sure you leave a comment down below or join my Discord server for pretty much daily updates on items to invest in and so on. We have a huge gold making community over there, so if you're trying to make gold in Classic, it's definitely a good Discord server to be a member of. A massive thank you to all of my patrons, you guys are truly amazing, and I appreciate your support more than you know. I also love that I can share gold farms early as well as early access to investments and basically just early information relevant to gold making without breaking the market. Since if I upload a video, the information is public, but if I give that information out on Patreon, a much smaller audience gets to take advantage of it. VIP level patrons can also see their names on the screen right now, and if you want to become a patron and get access to a secret gold making community, as well as early access to gold farms, investments and gold making strategies, you can check out my patron through the link in the description. If you can't afford or don't want to support me on Patreon, do not worry, I will still give out most of the information for free, since I really do enjoy making videos like this one. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful, and hopefully it helps you make some gold in phase 5. If you haven't smashed that like button yet, make sure to do so, and if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.